Session 6 of Complexity Explorer's MESA tutorial. In this session, we're going to finish agentizing the landscape by turning our sugar distributions into agents, as well as adding both our sugar and spice uh, agents to our scheduler. Let's get started. So if you open up your Google Colab, before we begin, make sure that you have uh, uploaded your sugarmap.txt. This file is necessary to ensure that uh, you can actually read the distribution. There's the Upload button. It's found in the course material. All right, and then we're going to import our dependencies. All right, so previously, we've done this pip install Mesa Quiet. Uh, but a more common convention for this uh, is to do a Python try accept statement. Try, and then you try and import Mesa. If that doesn't work, then you do the pip install. And again, we'll be using the quiet parameter uh, so that way we don't get a, uh, we reduce the amount of output. And then after we install, we can import. So now that we've run that, and now all our import functions uh, are in one cell, so we can get rid of this cell. Next is uh, our resource classes, right? So here's our sugar class. Now, Mesa uses a black formatting, right? So in that case, you actually don't want the space uh, between the quotes and the class. However, there's a library for that called Black, and that'll fix it for you uh, if you ever decide to make a contribution. Here's our Spice class. We'll be updating that later. All right, our Trader class, which we'll discuss in later lessons. Uh, and then finally, uh, our Model class. Let's run this. This is where we initialize our model. We'll be working most of the time. Right, uh, and just want to make sure it's all still working. All right. Um, so the first thing we want to do here uh, is we're not going to need this print statement anymore. All right. This is the uh, for loop where we uh, take our sugar map that txt and sugar distribution and turn that into agents and place them on the grid. But we also need to put uh, our agents in a scheduler, so that way we can track what order they're activated. Uh, this is important. Uh, as the activation order of any agent-based model does have an impact, uh, as was shown by uh, Dr. Ken uh, Comer uh, in his dissertation, Who Goes First? Uh, but if you want to see all of the uh, options, remember this is you go to the Mesa GitHub page, go into Mesa, and in the time.py file, you can see all the activation classes. So you have your base scheduler. Uh, your random activation, right? uh, simultaneous activation, uh, and stage activation. Right? But the one we'll be using uh, in, for our model is random activation by type, because we have sugar, spice, and traders. Okay? And all these have different variations on uh, how to select your activation regime, which, depending on your model, will, uh, will have various impacts uh, as you try and replicate your phenomenon of interest. Right? So to import or to uh, create, instantiate an object uh, called schedule, called self.schedule. Right? It'll be mesa.time uh, dot random activation. Right? So we imported mesa, the time.py file, and now the class random activation by type. Right? And so we can initiate that, and now we have uh, instantiated an instance of a random activation by type class. Right, and we'll store that in self.schedule. Right. Now we want to make sure that we add our agent into the schedule. So they're uh, in a location, if you will, on the grid. Right, and now they need to be stored inside the schedule so they'll be, uh, their behaviors will be activated uh, throughout the model. And as we'll see later, the uh, uh, scheduler looks for the step function uh, as the way to determine what step each agent should be doing in the in the model. All right, so now that we've done that, now we need to create our spice uh, agents. Right, so we've created our sugar agents. Now we're going to create our spice agents. And 
and so now we're uh, just to follow the exact same process, iterating through um, each element of our grid because that uh, is a 50 by 50 array, just like our uh, sugar and spice distribution is, a, or our spice distribution is a 50 uh, by 50 array, uh, and we'll just follow that same process. Now this kind of violates the dry principle, or do not repeat yourself, um, uh, in that we're using pretty much the exact same uh, code for our spice agent as we are for our uh, sugar, or, uh, as we did for our sugar agent. So now the first thing we're doing is identifying uh, what's the max spice at that location. Now as the uh, sugar, spice, and uh, grid all have a 50 by 50 array, it's not strictly necessary to have both these for loops. If you have a very large model, this can add a lot of overhead that's not necessary. Right? The impact it has would be all the uh, sugar agents would be sequential in their agent IDs, and then all the spice agents would be sequential, which may uh, be desirable for personal preferences or, or other reasons. Right? But we don't actually need it. Um, and since the agent by type will keep track of which uh, agents are sugar, which agents are spice, or which agents are traders, uh, we're, I'm actually not going to use this. However, we did want to provide you some uh, insight into you know, various options or choices uh, that are really up to you uh, when you're making your, your model. All right? But now, pretty much follow the, you know, very similar code. Right? So identify what the max spice is at that x, y coordinate. Right? Then if it's above zero, so again, this is to make sure we don't create unnecessary agents. Right? Then we're going to instantiate um, uh, a spice class object so that we can uh, add it to the grid and add it to the scheduler. So I have a spice class, okay, uh, and you know, it follows the same convention as a sugar class. Then we place it on the grid. Right, so we call uh, our grid object, and then use the place agent function from the Mesa uh, space dot uh, pi file. Uh, and then we're going to place it in our random activation by type scheduler, right, which is instantiate our self that schedule attribute. Uh, and then we're going to iterate through and add one to our agent ID. Okay. So now that we've done that, we need to update uh, our spice function, or our spice class rather, so, so it actually uh, takes in those parameters or as seen in the last lesson, we'll get an error. All right. Now we'll run this just to get it stored in memory. Now we'll scroll up to our spice class. Add yeah, those same parameters. So first is unique ID. All right. This is required by Mesa that all agents have a unique ID. That way you can keep track of them in the scheduler. I'll point it to your model. Their position, so they know where they are, right? and then the parameter, which is the max amount of spice that they can have. And then uh, we create the attributes that instantiate uh, once we uh, once we call the spice class, right? So we can use a super init function to inherit uh, the attributes that are required by Mesa from the uh, agent class, which is your unique ID and model pointer. Then we'll place them, uh, make sure they put them on a position so they know where they're at. Okay. And then the max spice we use twice. First, to keep track of how much spice is actually at that location, uh, uh, a trader agents start harvesting it. Okay. And then uh, to uh, remember what's the maximum amount of spice that could be at that agent, right? So that particular cell doesn't just keep growing uh, and growing. Uh, without stop. Okay. Now, if you want, uh, you can also add comments, right? Just to make sure other people that look at your code uh, are aware of uh, the two differences of those attributes, right? So the first one tells us how much spice at a given time step. 
uh, and the most spice that could be at a given location. All right, so then once we've done that, we want to you know, uh, run the cell so it gets stored in memory. Uh, and now we want to test to make sure that our code is doing what we think it should be doing. So an easy way to do that is to uh, add a print statement. It needs to be above the agent ID, otherwise you'll get an error uh, because uh, it will, it will, uh, you'll reference an agent ID that hasn't actually instantiated a uh, agent yet. All right, and so the way we're going to test this one is we're going to reference our scheduler, right, uh, and that has a dictionary called agents by type, right, which will have all the sugar agents uh, in one key, all the spice agents in another key, and all the trader agents in another key, right? Um, right? Uh, and then uh, you could call their agent ID, right, which is another key that will refer it to its agent object. Okay. That should actually be sugar, not spice. Uh, right? Okay, uh, so now we're referencing uh, our dictionary that's keeping track of all the agents by type. I'm going to use two things. It's type, right, it's a first key value, it's a dictionary of, dictionary, dictionary of dictionaries, and then the agent ID is the second uh, key. And then the value for that is the agent object. And it works the same for spice, uh, and it'll work for the, the same for uh, trader. And again, where's agent by type come from? You can look in the uh, time.py file under the random activation class, right, and see that dictionary. Right, so we run that to keep it in memory. Right, then we run it and we get an error. Okay, so we look at our traceback, says name error, name max spice is not defined. Uh, looks like we added an extra underscore uh, when we created max spice. So that's easy enough. Delete that extra underscore. Run, then run again. All right, as you can see, we get a uh, the printout of sugar and spice alternating objects with their hexadecimal uh, memory location. All right now, again, if we had uh, kept that other for loop, it would have been all sugar and then all spice. Um, in my case, I decided not to uh, do two for loops uh, because the um, Mesa would keep track of them. All right, so that concludes session six, uh, where we have finished agentizing our landscape. In the next lesson, we're going to uh, instantiate our trader class and start building out our traders. Thank you.